My name is Gladys Mwaka and I'm a research scientist at the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. My main duty is to conduct research and uh, disseminate findings. Currently, my main area of interest is on fish feed and the other area is on seaweed farming. And I mostly work with communities just like I'm here in Kabunzoni in order to enhance their livelihoods. So the main area that I'm enhancing their livelihoods is through fish farming and uh, different other aspects that concerns mariculture production. So we have this black soldier fly larvae. This is an insect. Black soldier fly larvae, what it does, it recycles organic waste into a highly valuable protein feed for animals. So I learned these uh, black soldier fly larvae when I was searching for an alternative protein ingredient for fish feed. So there was this scholarship which uh, was, uh, was organized by the ISIPE organization. ISIPE is an international center for insect uh, physiology and ecology. So there was this bioinnovate fellowship in Black Soldier Fly Labby as an alternative uh, protein for animal feed. So I applied the scholarship. First I got interested, then I applied and I got the scholarship. Uh, this is where I went for six months for the training. Mostly I learned about the production processes of the black soldier fly flies and how it can be used as a protein ingredient for animals. We came to know about this community through a media, 2019. There was a drought and there was an intervention about hunger and all these things. So we, may, we had an interest how to help and we wanted to do something different. We didn't want just to come and give the handout of the, of the flowers or food as any other person was doing, but we wanted to come with something that's more sustainable and long-term effective. And that's how we ended up here, because we knew it through the media. Uh, and we have been having a long journey together with this community. To, to say this, like, uh, it has been an interesting journey because uh, as, a, as, a, as a, an NGO in Belgium, and. Uh, to know this in, through the media was so interesting that that triggers us. It triggered the, all of us to see like what can we do. And uh, we, we came and the, the people told us about the challenge of water. There was serious hunger and serious hunger even for water. The people were thirsty. Children were no longer going to school. And so this prompted us to go back to our boardroom and decide what can we do. And we said we can we should provide water because water will bring up the other things people can do agriculture people can do any other thing and so a decision was made to do a to drill a borehole and the borehole was drilled here in the year 2019 third march uh, and we will say that uh, it was the beginning of everything but we did not meet our expectations because we wanted to have uh, clean water for the people to drink and we could also do irrigation it was not as we planned, so the water was so salty, the salinity was very high. We were a little bit drawn back and we were like, what do we do? It's now beyond our expectation, so we are not yet solving the challenge. By good luck, uh, one of our team members had a contact with the officials of Kemfrey, and this is how we came to know Kemfrey. So we, we approached Kemfrey, that to, because we read about them, we heard about them, what they do in the community, we are about what the research they're doing. So we approached Kemfrey through the director or through the president of the organization, Mr. Rudy. And the Kemfrey agreed to come and do further research to the borehole water. With this high salinity, the advisors on the marine tilapia. And the journey began that we for us to partner with Kemfrey. And I think we had our first meeting on the 26th of July 2021. And that was the beginning of all the good stories we see here today. I will say our collaboration with Kemfrey has been very interesting because we cannot do it. We didn't have the knowledge. Uh, I didn't have the knowledge of what we need to do with this salinity water. Uh, we didn't have the knowledge, both of us, here in Kenya and those in Belgium. And through the intervention of the researchers from Kemfrey, led by Gladys and Dr. Mirera, we established this kind of fish farm. And today we are here because of the research that was done by Kemfrey. <laughs> 
There are some strategies that have laid down, at least to ensure the sustainability of black soldier fly culture in this area. During our discussions with the Kitanda organization, I gave out an idea of having a posho meal for the group, for this group of Kabuns only. So with these committees will be doing milling services to the villages around. Other ingredients used for fish feed will, fish feed will be grinded for free and mezban which is being used in hatching the black soldier fly eggs will be freely available. This is something that will really help the communities. We have also trained the communities on the production of black soldier fly larvae so that they can do it on their own. We have taken them through the overall fish farming production processes and now they are able to manage the facility, they are able to formulate their own feeds and many other aspects including post-harvesting a technology that will sustain their project as well. As Kitanda, one of our ways that we, we wanted to make sure that this happens as well as the sustainability beyond the donor, we really engage the local person in the project from the decision making time. They make decisions with us. We don't just come up with our own decisions. Of course we get them. We involve them in the running of this project. So one method we are doing, this group is registered as a CPO. Uh, we, are, we hope that in a long term, we can still be able to advise them, but not execute most of the things. They can do it by themselves. So they have their local leadership. But we have always phone call away for advice what to do. Number two, the, we have also taught them how to maintain these uh, pipes, these solar panels. That they have been trained now to feed the chicken, to feed the, to vaccinate, to take care of the BSF. So they do it by themselves. They don't have to hire an expert from outside to come and do it. Easily means that they have the knowledge, the simple knowledge to run this project beyond us. Yeah. Okay. One of our future plan is how to have sustainability program, and you see. We have begun the future plan with Kemfri coming with the BSF. Um, our worry was the continuous production or the cost of production for the community. You see, in the beginning when a donor is giving everything, the donor buys the feeds, it seems very easy. The challenge comes when the donor now walks out and hand over everything to the community. And together with Kemfri, we decided to have the BSF because we want to see can the cost of feeding the fish goes down. How will the people in this community afford to, to feed the fish? Currently we are buying the fish feeds for them, but we will not do that for the next one year. And that's why you see, one of our future plans was to have the BSF, which is the Black Soldier Fly. And we are also planning to have a meal, a maize meal here, where they can have the normal uh, wishwa that they're using to make the fish, fish, fish feeds. So those are our future plans uh, that we are planning to have in this community. You see we have also other things coming up like the poultry. And uh, interestingly, the, the fish, uh, not only the fish will feed from the BSF, even the, the chicken. Uh, this is very interesting because the future is already taken care of about the production. For this project to be sustainable, we have to have ways of reducing the cost of production for these people. Otherwise, we have been investing a lot of money here, but in the next one to two years, it is a loss because they cannot maintain the cost of running this project. And so, BSF is one of our future plans and we need to expand it. Uh, we also have a a vision of doing other species of fish, fish farming, 
as advised by Kemfrey, we can do the, the catfish, which will also be like another second species of this program. We also need, to, we are also planning to do what we call fish reproduction ponds, where they can reproduce their own fish, for, fish fingerlings, sell to other farmers, and also regenerate their own fish without buying the, the fingerlings or the small fish from them.